So this morning we're going to be doing some double cutting. Uh, that's a Seligna hardwood log there. And I've positioned the log between the frame. So I've, I've swung the blade into horizontal and I've positioned the log between that face then I wind it all the way to the right and between that face. So, so the log's pretty central to the, the, the mill now and uh, we'll just be showing just how quick it is to double cut. So really it's not a, tw uh, a 10 inch machine, it's a 20 inch machine and a 12 inch, it's a 24 inch machine. So, so uh, double cutting on our swing blade mills are, is pretty easy, specifically on our automated mills it's, it's even easier. So these are our narrow kerf uh, inserts. So, so the, 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 the bits are uh, machined back to 5.7 millimeter wide and our uh, shanks are, are skimmed back too for extra clearance. Um, so this has, been, this has cut a whole log and you won't see any sort of sap build up anywhere around that insert tooth. So uh, that clearance really helps. And uh, the narrow kerf um, is, is good when you're dealing with harder timbers, hardwood, uh, softer woods where there's lots of like fur and, and knots, the wider kerf's a little bit better. But the blade body is, is nice and thick. Um, with the 5.7 mil kerf tips, you will need to run, run water just, just for, for that uh, reduced uh, clearance on both sides. So, so we're just going to sharpen this blade real quickly. Like I said, we did a, we did a log yesterday with us. Um, so it's due for a sharpen. So here we go, we just uh, slide that on, locate the tooth there, there's a hole that it pops into, and there we go. One tooth. Don't lose this little pin. Line that hole up. Pop her in. That's another tooth down. And you don't need to get the whole face. It's just, just the, the very edge of the tip at the very end and uh, it'll ultimately wear down so that the whole face is contacted. Here's another one. You can just put your finger on it, you can feel the difference when it's sharpened. Drop that in there. Don't need to go super fast. One more, I believe. Another one down. Yep, we're good. So right now, I'm going to uh, loosen up these two big bolts, take that small bolt out and swivel this guard up, this swivels out of the way, and then I'll put that, that uh, bolt back in. So it'll be held up out of the way, and that'll allow up to around a two and a half inch double cut without removing any guards. So I've just uh, wound this back, so it's flush here, pivoted the guard, and you'll notice that I can still swing that blade while the guard being fully installed. So there we go, we're ready to do some double cutting. So before we get started, uh, traditionally you set your blade horizontally, perfectly flat, which means you have to dither around with the settings and so on. Um, but I actually like to do it on the, uh, on the, uh, the, 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 the gearbox there. You can actually, um, look at the difference between the two cuts and if there's a big step like four millimeters you could actually adjust it right there on your reverse cut so 
and take it out of it completely. Um, especially when you're running such a narrow cuff, you do need a, a quite, quite a strong lead in. So we'll leave those settings and we'll just adjust it right there. So we'll do that first live edge slab at the very top and we'll just compare the two cuts. And then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, from then on, we'll adjust it from that, that, uh, that unit. <laughs> our open cut and I can see there as suspected that there'd be around a four millimeter uh, deviation from one side to the other because of our lead-in. So you can see that deviation over here. So what we'll do, we now know we can actually measure the difference there and apply that when we do our reverse cut on the, on the gearbox up there. So you can see there, I just applied a tad under the kerf on that side with that uh, gearbox up there and it's pretty much perfectly flat. So now we know we just need to apply that four millimeters at that side of the cut, every cut, and you'll get those two cuts matching perfectly. You do have a very, uh, you do have a very uh, finite control on that mechanism so you can get it pretty smooth just, just that way. That way you don't have to fiddle with your, your adjustments to get that uh, double cut matching perfectly.
wind to the other side, start it up. So there's our double cut. It's uh, got a bit of tension in it, but hey. So nice, nice connection and super easy process. So a 10 inch machine will do 20 inch, our 12 inch machine will do 24 inch, and our six inch machine will do 12 inch. So they're double cut machines. <laughs>
tools. Ten inch to start with, bring it back with me. No, back an inch. There we go. to curve, four millimeters, come back, get to that, well, we can actually cut some while we're doing that, there we go, we start the pigeon with it, it's going to carry on, so we've got to stop, let it stabilize, and let it go. So here we go, here's the lines. Pretty, pretty good. Smooth all the way through. The double cuts wasn't the perfect log to uh, double cuts full of spring. Uh, so I'm gonna resaw these slabs into six by two because that's what I actually need for my cattle yard. But uh, it's a good example of how double cutting's achieved on this machine. So definitely not just the narrow board machine. This will cut your wide boards all day long. So here. Double cutting was just an illustration of how it's done. I actually need six by two. So I'm gonna resaw these boards on the slab into six by two. Now what I do is I actually swing in the vertical and I drive forward in the cut. So I come back empty, go forward in the cut for resawing. What that does, that pushes the slab into the log. So it doesn't have any bounce. Um, much more accurate way to do it. So we'll do that. Thank you. 
that on my trailer. Beautiful board. Four by two along the split. Last board. If you don't want to draw lines on your slab, just throw some uh, sawdust on your slab and that'll keep everything up higher so you don't have to draw lines in your beautiful slab. Here's the last slab again. Every last little bit out of it. Timber to stack. Timber slab pile. So yeah, double cutting, just uh, swing that guard out of the way. <laughs> 